that's what's more fun for me. I spent most of my life as a He may have been born after Dr No first premiered, but through quality stage, television and film work, Daniel Craig was rightfully accepted into acting royalty when he was asked to play James Bond. But before the life of Martinis and Aston Martins, Daniel worked hard for his success. Born and bred in England, the ambitious Daniel worked steadily in the 90s in the UK's television and film industry, developing a solid reputation. Later, confessing as a young actor he had the arrogance to believe he couldn't do anything else, Daniel broke into the American mainstream with Tomb Raider, appearing as Lara Croft's old flame and fellow Tomb Raider. Daniel hung in there as the morally twisted Alex West. He's in, in it for what he can get, and he's in it for the money. Um, so his morals are very dubious, let's say that instead. And, um, but I think you'll find his heart's in the right place. Daniel's first lead would be in the British crime thriller Layer Cake, playing a cocaine dealer tasked with two tough assignments on the eve of his planned retirement. Daniel experienced a sniff of what it's like to be involved in the drug game. They do business like business people do business. And whether or not, um, you know, whatever you think about it, it's, I mean, it's probably, you know, they, they like, they work on the stock market. They look the same, they speak the same, they just happen to, you know, as my character says, his commodity happens to be cocaine. Uh, but as far as he's concerned, it's no worse than selling stocks and shares in, in the city. Meanwhile, Daniel's stocks were definitely on the rise because Steven Spielberg cast him in Munich, the true story of the terrorist attack at the 1972 Olympics. Craig delivered a sharp performance as one of the members of the team who wholeheartedly believes in the righteousness of the mission. And as the movie goes on, I think as we see with all the characters, we see the fact that these are just human beings and they're just, and he, he but he's, you know, he's kind of, um, he's, um, he suffers um, because of the terrible things that they begin to do and the, and the terrible acts that they have to commit to fulfill this, um, um, the job they've taken on. And that's kind of really, that's what interest, interested me so much about doing it because um, he's flawed and I kind of like playing flawed characters. His next character has flawless secret agent skills. Yes, Daniel decided to make the life-altering decision and suit up to play James Bond. In the franchise's 50-plus years, Daniel is the sixth actor to play Bond. And with the legacy comes all sorts of pressure. The comparisons to your predecessors, your looks and charisma with the Bond girls, and if you can authentically utilise your licence to kill. And even with a fair amount of criticism about the buff, blonde Bond choice, by the time the first film Casino Royale premiered, the fans were on board and Daniel was deep into the famous character. I wouldn't touch this unless I could explore the character of this person. It would just would make have no interest to me. But let's not get it wrong, this is a James Bond movie. We're not this is not a deep deep down, deep psychological study of a human being who's going through. This is James Bond. I mean, and there are certain rules that apply to this man. And like I said to you, I mean, it's, you know, he's, um, he's been, he's, as far as he's concerned, he's, he's the best at what he does and he's the best and, he, and, and, and nothing can stop that. What I've always liked about it and what certainly was, comes through in the Ian Fleming books is that here's a man who believes that and then all the time gets knocked back. And it's how he deals with that that's interesting. The success of the first film locked Daniel in as the face of Bond for this generation. The next edition of the series, Quantum of Solace, didn't do as well at the box office, but Daniel was praised for expressing the complexities of the previously surface level character. Ian Fleming wrote a very complex character in James Bond. And um, I mean, so much so that he's been able to, the character's been able to morph, you know, through the various actors who have played him and through various generations. And there's a, you know, there is a lot of, in the books, um, he internalizes his feelings a lot. And that's something that I think Daniel is able to, sh to portray how Bond is feeling and thinking uh, without really saying very much. To avoid being typecast as only 007, Daniel took a break from espionage and went on to star in the World War II drama, Defiance playing a simple farmer turned freedom fighter. He leads a group of Jewish refugees to fight back against the Nazi regime. 
In the media, Daniel's occasionally been considered a little surly or short when being interviewed or walking the red carpet. But in his defence, Daniel claims to be a private person who finds it a bit unnatural playing the press game. But this strong, silent vibe is exactly what director Ed Zwick needed for his lead character. Daniel is a very modest man and yet a very forceful man. He is uh, someone who is wonderfully self-deprecating and yet seems to project enormous power. He also is a very soulful person, but not revealed to be that right away. And I thought those qualities were, were, were particularly um, appropriate to who this man was. To reinforce his desire not to be pigeonholed, Daniel went on a tour de genre, completing full films in one year through 2011. The first was the comically titled action sci-fi western, Cowboys and Aliens. Yeah, when I saw the title and I was intrigued by the title, I was worried that it was gonna be a, a comedy and I just thought, you can't do a comedy of a film that's called Cowboys and Aliens. And what I loved about it is it was played for played straight. It was uh, it was gonna. John wanted to make an authentic western, and he's done an amazing job. Then came the thriller Dream House, where he met his future wife, the unfeasibly beautiful Rachel Weisz. The couple married in a private ceremony shortly after the film wrapped up. But their love life didn't hold up their careers, as Daniel used his talents for the animation The Adventures of Tintin. Yeah, so you, you film in a very small space with uh, technicians around you. You have cameras in your face, but they're not filming anything. They're just there for, uh, for, for reference. And the rest of it is thrown into the computer in some wizardly way, which I have no idea how. And to get him over the line, Daniel stepped into the shoes of the Swedish investigative journalist Mikael Blomqvist in The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Based on three best-selling novels and a franchise of Swedish films, was Daniel worried about missing the mark in the Hollywood version? I think the situation is, is always going to be... Um, you take on as much information as you can, you gather as much information, you talk to as many people as you can, and then you interpret it. It's, that's what we kind of do as actors. You know, you can't, you can't be worried about what you do. Um, uh, otherwise, you'd never. You, if you were thinking about, you know, what other people thought all the time, you were only were acting. It wouldn't work. Proving his acting range, Daniel once again returned to star in the 23rd Bond film, Skyfall, which appropriately coincides with the Bond series' 50th anniversary, making it the longest and most profitable film franchise of all time. I just like working. I mean, it's simple as that. I don't think about it really, genuinely. Um, and I, like I said earlier, i had been lucky enough to get some really nice roles thrown at me and uh, I grabbed them, but I, I don't have any kind of, this is, if I could do this for a few more years, I'd be more than happy. Will you be doing this for a few more years? I'll ask her. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, definitely. So it looks like he's going to keep that licence to kill for some time, yes. Daniel Craig's a bit of a contradiction, really. He's humble yet hard, blunt yet expressive. And I think it's those inconsistencies that make him interesting to watch on the big screen. And it's going to be his range beyond Bond that'll keep us coming back time and time again, even after he retires from Her Majesty's Secret Service. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. Find or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and mnc.tv.